We've done calculate and all that stuff, haven't we? In Power BI and we're DAX, right? We're getting comfortable with it, right? There's one other thing that we've kind of dipped into. We've done an average X, but the X functions are key and they are difficult at times, but simple. All right, lads and lasses, welcome along. Weekend work. X functions. The X functions are a, are a group of functions that allow you to do complicated calculations across a table. They are iterative, so they will do it row by row, so they can be very slow. Um, they are very good at doing particular things, and we'll show you a little example today um, I'll be honest, it's a bit of a backwards one, but it'll make sense when you see it. Um, they're extremely good when they're useful or when you need them, but they can be overused or used in the wrong places and then they slow everything down. So let's cut on our and have a look at Power BI Desktop and see the example that I've set up. All right, so here we are, yeah? I've set this up. This is now special about it. Right, we've got a sample sales set of sales data here. We've got some sales, right? Those sales are to different countries. So those countries are using different currencies. So what we'd like to be able to know is, well, how much is it gonna be to sell this to this person? What's this person gonna have to pay in their local currency, right? Now, I've mentioned this a few times about live currency conversions and stuff like that. You can do live currency conversions. It works in Power BI. There are ways to do it. There's plenty of videos on showing you how to do it. I know um, Ruth Pazuela over at uh, Kerbal.com. She's done one. It's brilliant. Corporately, a right, big business, live currency doesn't work. Right, if you imagine, I had a client with doing like big R&D projects globally. And it would be like, oh, the project in France is doing this. The project in Slovakia is doing that. The project in the US is doing the other. Right? And then head office in the UK would be saying, well, how much are we spending? You know, our budget is X amount at the start of the year for R&D. So live conversions just don't work in that context because it's local spend, but it needs to come back. And it's spend is being allocated from the UK. It's just, yeah, it, it all doesn't work. So you need to use a currency table. So they have something like this, right? In practice, you'd set them up where you would have, again, probably an unpivoted style. So we'd have year, potentially month. You might have a month year version. You might do it changing month by month. You might have it annually changing. Either way works, right? And then you have your currency code and the rate, right? In this case, where it's the rate to go from US dollars to the local currency. So we could turn around and say, right, how much is it going to be for me to buy this in the UK paying in US dollars? Well, you know, what's it going to cost me? Right. So that's kind of what we've, we've set it up like. And I've built this and it's just showing you these local these sales, really. And we can see the local sales column, which is going to give me the local price that it would be in the currency. And then the US dollars sales amount, so actually how much have we sold? And the way I've written this to do it might surprise some of you because one of the things, again, you need to think through is X functions are iterative, right? So this is the local sales, which I'm basing it on the currency table. So it's just going to run through and run the calculation for each currency, right? So this will work. So what we're doing is we're using the join to go and say, the currency rate multiplied by the sum of the sales column. Okay. What you might want to do is build a calculated column, right? And this is a this is a tough one. These are tough ones here, right? A lot of people will tell you, me included, right? Avoid calculated columns if possible, right? That's not to say calculated columns are never going to be needed. Right? This is a great example where you might say we want a calculated column, but there's going to be an impact on you doing it. So the reason 
not to have a calculated column is because what will happen is you will use the algorithm or the compression algorithm of Power BI to compress the data model. So it will go through and it'll say, right, I'm going to do, or this column has the fewest unique values. That's the one we're going to compress first, blah, blah, blah. Right. And it keeps it roughly like that. It kind of goes through and works out and then says, right, this is the most efficient compression schema for this table. Once it's done that and compressed it, then it calculates the values that you'd have for your calculated columns. So you lose that opportunity. They can still, they're still compressed. They're not uncompressed, but they're compressed after the fact. So it's not optimized compression. It's compression, not optimized. For a sales column like this, it's probably gonna be anyway, one of your more expensive columns because it's likely that they're gonna be quite unique, those values. So you'd be replicating your unique value column with another unique value column, which is a problem. We know the currency and we could set something up to do it. And we could set up here. Um, we could do it, couldn't we? We're going to go, right, let's add a new column. And this is going to be Local price equals sales, so sales, sales, obviously, multiplied by related, follow it, which is allows you to follow a join, so by the related rate. And we'll hit enter on that, right? And this now gives us, here's my local price column. We'll move out the way, you can see, local price column. So I'd then be able to work through and say, all right, okay, so this order that we've got, um, let's say it's in, let's pick a nice country out of the UK. So we'd be able to see this order from AV stores, it was $2,000, $2,082. It's actually gonna be 1,562 pounds. So that works. Well, that's quick, that's easy, okay? And in essence, what we have here is the basis of what an X function could be or could do for us, right? So we've, I've showed you already the local sales one that I wrote in currency running against the currency table, right? We could do the same running against our sales table. So we could go through, write a new measure. Local prices, sales equals sum X, the sales table, and the expression is going to be sales, sales, multiplied by related rate. Okay. And that's going to do us the same value. Now, the interesting thing would be, put your money where your mouth is, Ross, as they say. Let's put that in here. And let's put that in as that. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's put that in as a clustered one of those. And let's put it across currency there. Yeah. And then let's do the same again. So I've copied and pasted it. And this time, instead of using that one, let's use this here. Okay, so the values will be the same. We'll hover over Japan, 20 billion. Sorry, 20 million, 20 million, right? So it's the same values. So that's worked for us, right? We can see that, right? But let's try this. If we go and we go into the view menu and we hit performance analyzer, right? Let's start the recording and let's refresh the visuals. Okay. We've got the local sales price. There's definitely a difference, isn't there? It's not much. There's a difference. It's only 5,000 rows of data though. So it's, yeah, not much. Right. 
understand that that difference, for all it's not much, about 30 milliseconds over 5,000 rows. If this was your production data set and it was, yeah, pow, right, there's be an impact on it. So that's where you might say it's worth it to have the second value set there, like that um, local sales price. It's a difficult one to know, and it's about coming through and understanding what you do. You might want to do all well, there are so many things, but this is where it's important to understand about analytics and what you're analyzing. So, what do you reckon then? Right? A little bit more information on X functions, right? They do focus, and this is the key, is they focus on the table. It will depend on the table as to the impact that that will have on it. Right? But as you can see, with that currency conversion, there's not going to be many other ways of doing it. Right? And even if you're just running it on that single row at a time, having that X function there will be more efficient in general than having a calculated column. But a calculated column may still be more effective if you need to run lots and lots of things against it rather than running iteratively against each row. So there's lots to think through and understand and be aware of. You might find that you just need to do some trial and error work in terms of, in my use case, a calculated column works better, but my mate Steve's got a use case and for him, not having a calculated column works better. It's, I've seen both, it's the reality. And I wish I could say to you, there's a hard and a fast rule that will work for you every time with it. There isn't. And I've seen a lot happening with Power BI where it's, use case specific because it's going to come down to things like how many columns you've got the row counts that you've got in your data what the analysis that you're looking to do is you know are you looking to take that aggregation and break it down are you looking to do you know all that is all important and we'll all pay it will all play a part in the impact that's being had so let us know down below don't forget, head an hour to geordieintelligence.co.uk, become a member, sign up to some courses. Hey, got some great stuff coming. The intermediate course is fantastic. Um, once that one beds in and we get that one bedded in and people are comfortable with it, we'll do the advanced course. We'll set up the advanced course and get advanced courses running as well. Hey, but I think between the introduction to Power Query that we've got, that two-hour session that just to take an analyst through the basics of getting started with power query we've got the dashboard in a day from microsoft that we offer and obviously we've got our intermediate courses both the us and the uk versions of those so i got plenty of choice haven't you so head on over there something to do for the weekend in it and uh have a great time take care of yourselves ta-da <laughs>